recording started. All right. Uh, we are now going into the fourth unit. Uh, it's about energy and society and related topics. And today we're talking about energy on demand. Now, we want to define energy to begin with. And energy is the capacity to do work. Uh, for everything in the world to function, energy is needed. When you drive your car to school, your engine will use chemical energy. Um, in the form of gasoline to move the vehicle, when you flip a, a light switch, electrical energy is used to release radiant energy. Okay, so you need to have energy to do work. So not much is accomplished without that. Now the unit for energy is joules. And the joules energy um, that you would apply, or that would be produced by applying a force of one newton over a distance of one meter. So a joule is equal to a newton meter. Okay. Um, now a calorie can also be used to measure energy and it's the energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water uh, one degree Celsius. Okay, and a food calorie is the energy needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water one degree Celsius. To do, and then a kilowatt hour which we've touched on before is equal to the work done uh, by one kilowatt acting for one hour. So basically you take uh, kilowatt, which is power, and then you multiply by time. Okay, so here's some units and some definitions. You've got joules, terajoules, petajoules, exajoules, and those uh, exponents translate to times 10 to the 12, 15, and 18. Okay. Um, now, one joule is the energy needed to draw a 24 centimeter line. Uh, but one terajoule is the energy in 24 tons of oil. Okay, uh, and petajoule is 24,000 tons of oil equal to, and an exajoule is equal to 24 million tons of oil. So that's a lot. Uh, calorie is equal to 4.19 joules. Okay, and a foraging hummingbird will consume about 15 calories of energy per second. Now food calorie, which is weird why a food calorie is different than a regular calorie, but it is. Uh, actually food calorie is basically a kilocalorie. Weirdness. But it's energy needed to raise one kilogram one degree of Celsius or 4,190 joules and a, student, a human walking 33 steps will consume these one food calorie or one kilocalorie. Now BTUs are, are British thermal units and that's the energy needed to raise the temperature of one pound of water one degree Fahrenheit and it's equivalent to 1054 joules. Now a typical barbecue has an energy output of about 8 BTUs per second. Now kilowatt hour is uh, equal to the work done by one kilowatt acting for one hour, which is um, 3.6 times 10 to the, say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 3.6 times 10 to the 6 joules. So that's uh, a large amount of energy. Uh, it's equal to the work done um, during five hours of vigorous cycling. So you have to work a while to produce that. Okay, now energy is related to society in different ways, but one of the ways it is um, sort of related to societies is the uh, industrial productivity. Okay, the, the you make, takes energy to make stuff. Okay, so and when your country makes stuff, then it uh, can sell stuff and make money. Okay, so that is related to the, the gross domestic product of a country. Now the gross domestic product or DG, GDP is measured in United States dollars and is used to make comparisons between countries. It is the total value of all the foods and services produced in the country. Now in 2002 Canada's GDP was 753 billion dollars and Kenya's was about 10 billion dollars. So there's quite a difference between you know some of your your 
G7 nations and uh, other countries. Now, even though the two countries are nearly the same size, are they smoking drugs? Kenya's nowhere near the size of Canada. So someone's been on the crack pipe when they went that thing. Anyway, now, but, you know, Kenya is a pretty big country. Uh, Canada's GDP was over 75 times greater. The reason is because of the economy. Canada exports such goods as motor vehicles, petroleum, telecommunications equipment, while the Kenyan economy is based primarily on exporting tea and coffee. So the energy intensity is the measure of a country's GDP relative to its energy use and is calculated by dividing the energy used um, by a country in one year by the GDP. Now one thing you could compare Kenya and Canada is, is Kenya is a smaller country, but their population is actually greater than Canada. So there's more people there. Anyway, factors affecting energy use. The five factors that affect energy use are climate, activity, population, energy intensity, and energy efficiency. Now, the climate is quite a large factor in Canada because if you live in colder climates, you need way more energy to heat their homes. Also, in a hot climate, you need energy to cool down your home. Extremes in temperature uh, is the aspect of climate that influences energy use the most. Okay, now actually the size of a country does make a difference too, um, because you're going to have more roads and larger distance distances to travel in a large country. Okay, and then you're going to have to you know have more gasoline consumption as well. Activity. Now, activity is the amount of work that is being done. Uh, in some industries, activity is measured by how many tons of steel is produced or how many cars. For financial institutes, their activity is measured by dollars made from investments. Energy is required to maintain all activities. Uh, countries that have a higher economic activity also use more energy. The population. More developed countries uh, are larger uses of natural resources. Um, that are used for energy. An increase in standard of living usually translates to an increase in energy use. Now energy intensity, uh, industries that are involved with extraction, refining and development of natural resources are highly energy intensive. This is another reason why uh, Canada has a high energy intensity because we do a lot of extracting, refining and developing of natural resources. Uh, large equipment, forestry, coal mining development require uh, more energy for every dollar of economic output. And the development of Canada's natural resources results in this high energy intensity compared to other industrialized countries. Now there's also energy efficiency, which is uh, a comparison of your useful energy output as opposed to your energy input. Okay, now energy input is a form of energy entering into a process involving a transformation, whereas the output is the desired energy. And that's important that we note that it's the desired energy. For example, if I put in, you know, some gasoline into a car and it's burned by the car's engine, what is the desired output? Well, it's not just that the engine gets warm. Who cares? You know, I need this engine to move me from point A to point B. So the useful output energy is equal to the energy uh, that actually goes to moving the car. Okay, any other types of energy that are formed are waste. And heat is the primary waste. Now, if you're going to calculate energy efficiency, you're going to use this equation here. Useful output energy divided by the input energy multiplied by 100. Now here's some input and output energies for some energy converting de devices. Um, the input energy for light bulb is electrical, the output is visible light. And the waste energy would be the, the non-visible EMR like heat. Car engine, the input energy is chemical, the output, the useful output energy is kinetic, and there's lots of thermal waste energy. An oven has an electrical input. A thermal output um, and the waste energy would be 
Thermal energy not transferred to food. Television has no electrical input, invisible light output, and there would be a waste energy of non-visible EMR and thermal energy. Now, for all devices that convert energy, some energy is lost as thermal energy. This is basically a consequence of the second law of thermodynamics. Okay, there is no 100% efficient, um, you know, mechanical system. Efficiency is represented as a percentage of the input uh, that has been transformed to useful output. Now, for a light bulb, electrical energy is the input and visible light is the output. And the efficiency of the light bulb is the proportion of the input energy that's actually converted to visible light and not other forms of energy. So, although 60 watt bulbs are not as bright as 100 watt bulbs, both of those bulbs, bulbs will have similar efficiency. Now, fluorescent bulbs have a lower power rating, 17 watts, but will provide the same amount of light as a 60 watt. So the reduced amount of input energy that produces the same output energy is a result of increased efficiency, um, you know, of compact fluorescent lights. Now, by 2012, the sale of incandescent light bulbs, like your regular light bulbs, uh, they say it's going to be banned. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, but at least one source says so. Um, using fluorescent lights instead of incandescent is one way to offset uh, increased need for energy. Alberta's energy. Um, Alberta is a big energy producer. Although Alberta produces lots of non-renewable -renew energy, such as coal, petroleum, and natural gas, we also produce energy um, in the forms of wind and hydroelectric. Because the process is used to extract and process non-renewable resources, Alberta's energy use per capita is about two and a half times greater than our national average. Deal with it. <laughs> That's what I say. Anyway, so um, that is the intro into our Unit 4 and Module 7 topics. Okay, once you have uh, listened to this tutorial, make sure you submit a tutorial summary. Have a great day.